All right, this is part one of a Volamart uh, e-bike conversion series. And in this episode, we're going to install the hub motor. And we're going to put on the, uh, the little sway bar brackets and do some modification to the frame so it'll fit in there. Uh, my bike is an old Trek street bike or mountain bike with street tires on it, I guess is what it was. And so it's a steel frame and uh, it's pretty sweet. I got this puppy up close to 30 miles an hour. Not even kidding. All right, we're at wide open throttle. All right, so I have a couple tracks. Uh, this one, the single track, so it's a steel frame, and that should be ideal for, you know, e-bike conversion. So a little bit less likely to destroy the, the whatever that thing is that it bolts to. All right, let's unbox this thing. Uh, so this is the thousand watt, forty-eight volt kit, and there's one flaw it has right off the bat, which is kind of frustrating. What where where the the bike is put together there's big lip that I can snag it. I don't know if those edges are what people are talking about when they say that these kits blow a lot of tires. Uh, the deal is you're adding so much weight to the back of your bike you get those snake bite uh, flats. So I don't know. You know, some people say, oh yeah, you just sand it down, blah blah blah. Other people were complaining that these kits didn't come with the, the rubber to protect the tube from the uh, where the, the, the spokes go through, but I mean this kit has, has that piece of rubber, so I guess that's okay. There's just a few things to assemble on it. The uh, the sprocket that needs to be threaded on. Then you put the tube and tire on it. <laughs> so it comes with a big ass inner tube. So the tube is a 26 by 1.75 by 1.95. Okay. That'll work. Uh, this is the direction the tire goes. Let's see about getting this together. All right, let's see about taking this old one off. Ooh. They're so light. <laughs> this one, oh Lord. All right, so the instructions. I'm, I'm following the instructions. Yes, right. <laughs> so, step one. Uh, preparing the wheel, <laughs> installing uh, the gear on the back wheel. Uh, okay, doesn't say anything about anything, but it's 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 threaded, and so it's going to go on that way. I'm going to use some anti seize on it just in case. I uh, I don't know. There've been complaints, man, about. You, know, you buy cheap you get cheap right so it's what brand of these these are uh, San Yu Ningbo these seem okay this last one kind of rough and messed up so I'm just gonna do a very light coating if I can that's not very light there got some anises on it hopefully that won't mess it up Wow, it spins right on. Okay, so that's that, I guess. Not quite wide enough. So I also bought a torque arm kit. Let me see what this comes with and figure out how I want to use it. Uh, these things 
Maybe a little bit better instruction, I feel. <laughs> so does everybody. But I think I think we need a washer on the inside. It's definitely on the side of the of the uh, sprocket. I mean, there's nothing nothing holding it in place. Once you tighten it down, it would be grinding against the frame. Okay, so right off the bat, the instructions that come with it <laughs> say to have both the washers on the outside. But there's so little material contacting the you know where, where it fits into the notch I, I think I'd rather have uh, a washer on the inside and outside and plus you know I got the torque arm kit and I'll put that somewhere uh, but another problem so on on this side I put a washer on the inside and uh, it's scratching the paint off of uh, the bar so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little uh, one one more thin washer right in here uh, on the the side of the sprocket just because I mean it's so close right now it's it scraped the paint off it's no longer rubbing but you know it, it sure it sure could <laughs> I found some combination of small washers that should do the trick for me gosh there's really not much back there for this to sit on Maybe if I have that one there, and I put a lock washer on it, that would buy me a little bit more space, a tiny, tiny bit of space. That might be okay. A uh, little compression washer. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll just try that. I think it's going to be okay. I mean, it's already made clearance for itself. Okay, whatever. Let's just install it. It's not going to be permanent because this tire is really cheap. It's like a balloon. The more you air it up, the bigger it gets. All right, well, I finally got this uh, uh, hub motor to sit down flat and deep inside here. And, uh, you know, what everyone else does, I, I filed it out where the bottom is a little bit more squared off so it'll fit deeper in there. You see the shape that I did? I really, I squared it off a lot for it to fit down in there, but it, it sits nice and I'm happy with it. Did that to both sides. All right, so I, I modified this washer just slightly. I put it in the vise and hammered it down. It might actually make contact with something, but it's not going to do a, a whole lot to keep this thing from banging around. And this was already, I mean, I, I did file on it, but it was already wallowed out. On the top because this is the side where the chain is and and just a regular bike wheel i mean from oh god a long time this 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 bike is like a, a 95 trek or something so it's been uh it's been out in the wild for quite a while uh so you know got that in there and then i have these uh uh torsion bar things i was trying to figure out how to install it and this is kind of the best I can come up with because with all these things here that I need to have you know clearance to move this is this is as good as I could fathom at the moment so this is what it's going to get and it just barely fits in there and I guess I'm gonna just yeah like right there to my to my uh my my rear uh rack so, so that's what I'm thinking for this side. All right, so before I do this side, I'd like to uh, modify that by bending the tab over. And then also, i like to get this uh, torsion arm over here also. So in order to get that on the end of the wire, we need to take this plastic thing off because, you know, it won't fit. The, the wire colors, you know are mirrored on your control box right so you can just double check yellow red yellow red green blue black yeah they're all in the same spot so I can uh, I can pull these wires out without too much without without getting confused as how to put them back so uh, I think I can just release that spring and these will pull right out yeah so you see this little this little tab on the wire, if you uh, push that down, these will just come right out. Oh. I'm 
push it up and then then it'll pull out like that all right so with the cap off and all these little wires exposed I should be able to uh, remove this now I do them all at once we'll do them part at a time now will the nut come all the way off without a problem uh, and the washer go bang on this with a hammer. Alright, so I modified this thing where it's bent down slightly. And despite that, <laughs> you know, there's still not much to contact with. At least it contacts with something. I guess that's better than nothing. And then, I'm going to do this one the same way so it matches on, on both sides. I'll set up the torque arm in a similar way. I was thinking I could, uh, you know, use one of the hose clamps to keep it down like that, and I could even wire tie through that little hole to keep pressure on to this bar. That way, as this thing tries to torque, it'll actually might actually do something. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, but my my idea is if if the wheel spins this way, that means that this is going to try to torque the opposite way and that might you know get that nice and tight that might resist that all right so got my plug my sensor plug is not plugged in just sitting there so i can make sure i get all the colors right and uh, they go in one way and they just click so yellow, then I need green, then I need blue, then I need red below the yellow, and then I need black under the blue. And that should be fully functional again. Yeah. All right. Cool. You know the dual the dual torque arm kit probably isn't needed uh, on a steel frame bike, but I might not keep this kit on this bike. We'll we'll see what happens. I, I I'm just I'm just screwing around. So you know, might as well be prepared for anything. You know what I'm saying? Um, this dual kit is like two dollars more than a single kit, so why not? It fits. So I'm holding this back because there's a little bit of play in it. So I think if I hold it in position while I tighten this, then uh, then I might be able to get maximum use out of this little torque arm because it's not perfect. I'm going to do that on both sides. So I'm going to use different hose clamps. Uh, I think hose clamps are, you know, the good idea. Because imagine getting a flat on this thing. And uh, you had this mounted without some common tools like a flat head or, or a Phillips in the case of the original. But I'm going to use this smaller one. Just because uh, this hose clamp is it threaded all the way down to the base and it's not big enough to uh, I mean it won't get small enough to wrap around this little bar that I'm connecting it to this is meant to straddle you know like that or something alright then let's Tighten this up. That might stay on there. Uh, hilariously enough, the little you know bolts that they sent with the two washers they sent isn't long enough to uh, to take take uh, make use of, of the this nylon nut that they sent. 
Uh, so that's probably just going to rattle off like everything else. But it looks like the clearance is good. Sure. I can live with that. Why not? I'm going to need to... <laughs> I mean, these, these brakes are totally worn out. But I'm going to need to uh, adjust them. Because they don't, they don't fit with the with new tire size. Because I had a, a, a smaller tire on here previously. If they get to the rim, they just sort of get trapped, right? I don't know. I'll figure this out off camera. But yeah, I have to readjust these brakes. And buy new brake, brake shoes, pads, whatever these are. Next time, we're going to build this battery box and take a sneak peek at the batteries. Right, I'm starting to work on a battery box. Wow, I do believe that's going to work for me. It's off by, I don't know, a 64th or something. I mean, this is right there. I guess this is the moment of truth. Put one of these in. So it has a little bit of a wiggle to it. I'm thinking of hose clamps around the top side. 